Hello people of YouTube. So I've been asked a couple of times, Stuart, how do you animate disused level crossings? Well, think no more. I've made a number of videos about them and I thought I should probably show you the black magic that I use to animate these crossings. So I use Sony Vegas Pro as I do for all my other videos and it's a pretty straightforward process but there's a lot of steps to take and you kind of need to have a keen eye for it. So this is basically how I do it using the closed McClure street level crossing in Maryborough as an example. I believe this process is called masking which is basically just superimposing one image over another in Sony Vegas Pro. First thing I do is I get a screenshot of the crossing from footage that I've taken and put it in a Sony Vegas project. I usually make the length of the screenshot around 30 to 40 seconds, and sometimes I move it around the screen, but usually I stick to it being in the very middle of the video. Lovely! The next step is to find some lights that would be a suitable mask for them. Now I only use my own clips for my level crossing videos, and the ones I usually go for are the McLeese Street level crossing lights in Castle Maine. I use these ones because the footage I've got is bright and the lights are directly facing the camera. Isn't it just magnificent footage I've taken? As crossings have two flashing lights, I'll need two separate video tracks, so I'll create two, making sure they're above the screenshot video track. I'll then drag the video onto one of the video tracks and delete the audio. This will provide the flashing light animation for the left light. I'll also trim the video so that the lights start flashing at around 5 seconds into the clip. Next, it's about masking the flashing lights over the screenshot. So to edit one light, I will click the Video Event FX button. I then click the Mask button, as this will allow me to capture only a certain segment of the video clip. I then get the Circle tool and circle around the light I want superimposed. Now as you can see, they're not lined up at all and unfortunately since I'm now masking the clip I cannot move it around the screen using the video event FX. But what I can use is track motion, this little button on the left. This way I can move it around and resize it so that it lines up properly. I'll make the flashing light sequence around 20 seconds long. I also do a fade in and fade out effect so that it doesn't look too obviously edited. Basically it's all about playing around with it until it lines up properly. Once I'm happy with that, I do exactly the same for the other light. What I do here is I copy and paste the left light footage and put it into the other video track I've created. I then drag the original circle I made onto the light onto the right one and adjust it accordingly. In this case, a bit of the visor is imposed over the light, so I'll make the circle smaller so I don't capture the visor. And then I just keep playing around with it. Best thing you can do. Actually, no. The best thing you can do is regularly save the project and regularly render the video. Rendering it makes it into the final YouTube video quality format I'll need for when I upload it. It sort of gives me a better perspective of the quality of the video output than the video preview screen, so I'll render it a couple of times to make sure that it is absolutely perfect. Well, to my standards at least. Once I'm done with that, I'm up to my favourite part, which is finding some suitable background sounds. Now this crossing has a teardrop bell, and looking at this YouTube video, we can hear that the bell is relatively high pitched, and it plays quite fast too. As I also only use my own audio, I'll find a suitable bell sound from one of the crossings I've filmed that sounds pretty close to it. In this case, Warala Drive and Mantelizer has probably the closest sounding one I've got. Relatively fast paced with a similar pitch. Perfect! I then line it up, trim the audio to make it sound right, and render it again. Of course, if we didn't have audio of the crossing to base it off, I would just pick a crossing sound effect that would sound similar to the infrastructure of the crossing. Now because I cannot animate the trains using the crossing, what I do is I cut out the part where the train passes through in the audio. and just a few more adjustments to make the bell sound consistent. What I'm doing here is just putting in an extra fade effect into the audio track to make it sound nice and smooth.
That looks and sounds pretty good to me. And basically that's it. I'll obviously do the lights on the other side too, but yep, that's pretty much how I animate a disused level crossing. Oh, can't forget to render it one last time. This is the final result, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks for watching. 